Next, on Viewpoint, do churches need to get more involved in politics? Another question is often asked, it, does one political party have the corner on God? Our guest Bill Harris helps us sort it all out. And later in the program, does the church talk too much about money? That when I'm giving to the church, I'm not just giving to this building, I'm making a, a deposit in heaven. That's coming up next. This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Preaching politics in the pulpit, should there be a separation of church and state, and should there be a limit to what a pastor can say or do from the pulpit regarding political issues? Well, Bill, Bill Harris is with me today as a former journalist and uh, doing a lot of seminars and things on end times, but Bill, you've also been involved in a lot of politics. You've, you've yeah. testified before Congress. Yeah, I have. And uh, I've covered politicians on both sides of the mm -hmm. aisle. Um, at one time, uh, I was recruited by the mayor of the city of Toledo and the city manager to be the public information officer for the city of Toledo. As a Christian? Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I did that for the, for the last seven months mm -hmm. of a Republican administration and then for the first seven months of the incoming, the new incoming Democratic Well, you've got to keep it balanced. And that's the way God would have it. I mean, it wasn't by design. That's the way it happened. But we, we do say, I mean, I, it's not in the Constitution, but, but we've as accepted it as a culture. There's a ch there should be a separation between church and state. Originally, Jefferson set it to keep the, the state out of the yeah, church. Yeah. Now we're keeping the church out of the state, yeah. but it should, should it be there? It, it was meant for protection because, remember, coming over here to this country sure. and starting a country, we did not want a repeat of what had happened overseas. Right. We wanted that freedom mm -hmm. of religion. But I think when we look at the separation of church and state, we, can't have a separa we cannot have a separation of God and state. So maybe that's more to the point. It's a very complex mm -hmm. issue, and we're not going to solve it in the short time we have on this right. pro program. But I, I think that what we have to do is honor. We have to honor God in what we do, and we have to promote that. I think that the person who is our model for this uh, earthly model mm -hmm. was the late but great Dr. Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. No matter who was in power, Bob, he made his way into the White House to minister mm -hmm. to that person. He didn't stand outside the, 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 the White House and throw brickbats mm -hmm. at whoever was on the inside. Now, we do need to speak out on the issues. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. We do need to get out there and vote. God help us if, as Christians if we're not getting out there to vote for the candidates of our choice. Mm -hmm. We should do that. But what I fear can happen here is that Politics can be divisive if we are not careful. Absolutely. And if we get hung up on the love of this world rather than the, the truthfulness mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Remember, our, our kingdom is not of this world. We have the unique responsibility of living in two worlds, this one and the spiritual world, all at the same time. Do we abdicate our responsibility in this world because we're spiritual? Good question. See, those are the people, those are the people, Bob, who are so heavenly minded till they're no earthly good. good. <laughs> because all they, <laughs> they just think, think spiritual and they don't want to take care right. of the, um, the natural things. Right. Then on the other hand, you've got the, you've got the, when the, when the pendulum swings the other way, sure. you've got those who are carnal and they think only we have to depend on the earth resources and the resources of our government and, the, and that kind of thing in order to fashion our lifestyle and our culture here. But that is not what God calls Well, you would mentioned politics can be very divisive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got, you've got the two houses of Congress. We, we, we designed it to be right. that way in a, in a way. Adds to the balance. And they both have things that, that, are, that are powerful, that are good, that, mm -hmm. that the culture needs. We've got social justice issues. We've got things that are anti, like anti-abortion. On the other side, we've got these issues on both sides. Mm -hmm. Does God pick one side over the other? Is, 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 do one of, these, one of these sides have a, uh, do, do they own God? <laughs> well, you, you know, you're leading up to another question that's often asked. It, does one political party have the corner on God? Yeah. And that is not true. I think, l let me say this, I hope people don't get mad at me, but there, I think there's enough corruption on both sides of the political <laughs> aisle to go around. <laughs> I really do. And so yeah. our responsibility that's is true. to remember who we are and to, and to keep the message. The message is Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so if, if, a, if a Democrat is in the White House mm -hmm. and he will listen, we don't throw him out. We don't throw the baby out with the ba bathwater just because he is a Democrat. If a Republican is in the White House mm -hmm. and people don't like the Republican in the White House, we don't, we don't write him off because he is a Republican. Anybody 
anybody that will listen, as Billy Graham did, he showed us this time and again, whether it was Republican or Democrat in that White House, he would go in there carrying the gospel. And he said publicly he was not going to take a stand on issues. Now, mm -hmm. that didn't mean he didn't preach against abortion. I mean, I'm saying he didn't go in there to be divisive. He went after the president's soul. Wow, that's a big, big difference. Yeah, this is a big difference. See, now, it, yeah. okay, go and ahead. I, and I was going to say, um, I think when Paul was dealing with Felix, it was the same way because Felix, uh, as a uh, governor, wanted, um, he wanted to have control over Paul and he wanted Paul to make donations mm -hmm. to his uh, political sphere or kingdom or whatever, and it never happened. And of course, the upshot of it is Paul c continued to remain in jail. But the biggest thing, I think, is when you look at the, the, the point where Pilate was confronted with Jesus yeah. and he's standing there and he's talking about different things and Jesus told him that he was the truth and Pilate kind of in a snotty way said well what is truth? what's true yeah what's true well he was looking at it right there yeah. he was looking at truth but he went out instead and he told the audience well I don't find any fault with this man but he still missed Jesus mm -hmm. see and see politicians sometimes are missing Jesus and sometimes it's because we are not conveying. We're so, some ministers, I hope people don't get mad at me, some ministers some are more bent on political posturing than telling the truth. Mm. When we tell the truth, no matter what, I mean, there, there won't be a lot of political posturing. And, and this works on both yeah. sides. Now, this works sure. on both sides. You, you have to speak out on the issues, whether they're social issues, economic issues, and people are, when people are, are killing babies, we have to speak out on that, you know? When people are uh, violating other people and they're not showing uh, the, the love of God, you and I sitting here, why should I hate you because you're white? It, 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 I had nothing to do, and you had nothing to do with our grandparents, great-grandparents, where there might have been slavery issues and the like. I, my, my role, my job is to love you. Your, yours is to love me. And we need to have that coming together and not let, not let the politics yeah. come in and divide us. Yeah, if we're called to something in a political realm, I mean, we're called to some social justice issue, mm -hmm. does that mean that, we're, that we should exclude what the other side is, is doing in some other issue? No, it doesn't. And yeah. how, do we get that, how do we get that call and know that it's a, a God-anointed call? Yeah. This is where we have to spend time with God. And, and, and this is... This is going to be an area where some, some people are going to say, well, you know, you're getting too spiritual. Yeah. But we have to know what our calling is. And the Bible tells us to, be, to know your calling, make your calling an election sure. You have to know what God has called you into because I've, I've been guilty of being in certain aspects of uh, my ministry where God didn't want me to be. And you know what? It just floundered. It just didn't work yeah. because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And we need to be where God wants us to be. And, and, and stay in that calling and then let that calling grow. For some, God has called them to go into the halls of Congress and to witness to people and to, to testify. Billy Graham was called to go into the White House. That's a, yeah. That was a part of his calling. Yeah. And look how well he did it. I'm saying we have a role model right there because he didn't take sides. He had his own views, I'm sure. sure. He was anti-abortion like you and me, but he didn't he didn't use it to, to, di to right. divide the, the nation. You know, he, he, it, when it came to racial issues, you know, he had a situation where he went into New York to do, I think it was his first campaign many, many years ago, and they wanted to have the blacks and the whites sit, sit separately. separately. He wouldn't go in yeah. there. See what a testimony that, mm -hmm. that made? He for, didn't have for to that. speak on it. He just didn't. There you go. There you go. We have to be careful that we come together as one as mm -hmm. Christians and always keep a peace and harmony among us. And we've got to talk things through. We've got to pray th things through. Sometimes, Bob, we may be guilty of moving in the flesh rather than moving yeah. in God's spirit. So if, if uh, there's an issue, whatever that is, and mm -hmm. a pastor feels called to speak on that, uh, how does he keep it from becoming politically motivated? He wants it to be God motivated. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it, you, got a, you got an election coming up mm -hmm, and there's a political mm -hmm. issue, whatever it is, yeah. maybe a referendum on marijuana sure, sure. legalization that, that's typical and he wants to speak about that how does he make sure that that's that's god ordained and i'm, I'm not drawing sides i'm not yeah. i don't want to become can he speak politics from the pulpit yeah i mean i, I, I don't I, I, gee, I, gee, I, when we're talking about marijuana i don't know why it has to be so political it is it, it, is. it is i mean it is what it is yeah. but Sometimes you know it isn't. <laughs> you but, but we're called to preach that gospel and he has to say that that that, that pastor has to say that 
and he has no control over whether or not somebody's going to take it politically or not. They more than mm -hmm. likely will. They more than likely will. I mean, you, you and I have talked about it, and we know that, 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 that marijuana is a mind-altering drug. I mean, that's just what yeah. it is. You know, you, you're not in control of your mind. And, and I'm concerned about the one chemical in there, the THC that everybody knows, but all these other chemicals, over 400 chemicals in marijuana that we don't know about yet, and now we're making it free and available? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, not, that's not God. And we have to speak out on those issues regardless of the consequences. If there is someone that's even in politics that is perpetrating a, um, um, something that is ungodly, immoral, we have to speak out on this. Remember how the Bible tells us, I think it's First Timothy, that we need to pray for those that are in authority. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean just pray for the ones we like and the ones we <laughs> identify with in our particular yeah. party. We are to pray for all of them. Well, how does, the, how does the Christian get involved in the political arena without getting sucked into the corruption, ah, the corruption of it? I mean, it's, it, power is a yes, very, is. Uh, that's an hallucination. Yes, yeah. yeah, it is, it is, yes, it really is. It's a corrupting thing. I think the way you have to get involved is you have to be led into it. It's just like anything else. People have asked me, how come you haven't passed it? Well, I don't know. I, I may have missed it. I'll, I'll confess it. I may have missed it. Your, but I, your, your wife would probably tell me you missed she it. She tells <laughs> me that all the time. You know, I, I, I need Your to be led of that God that I should be a pastor. And I, and, I, and I will pastor if God wants me to pastor. But I have to know that God is leading me to, to mm -hmm. do that, you know, because, because there are going to be tough times as a pastor. And I can't fall back on, well, somebody told me I should pastor. No, if God tells me I should pastor. But you could become a very strong political leader and, and people would follow you. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it can be very corrupting. How do you stay away from that? Except that God didn't call me to politics, and mm -hmm. so I, I know that. I know that right. God, my, my, when my stepfather, uh, was, uh, not, uh, when he retired, he was in the Ohio State Legislature for 26 years, State Representative Casey Jones. And when he retired, he asked me if I wanted to step into it because I had, you know, quote, yeah. unquote, notoriety from television. And I said, no, you know, not degradingly. Because he would almost anoint you to do yes, that. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I knew that that was not God's calling okay. for me. And sometimes people are not in their calling. They've not made their calling an election sure. And when we get out of our calling, when we get out of our purpose, we make a mess of things. I know I raise both hands. I've done it in the past. <laughs> so much. So yeah. that's, I, I think we need to know that. And that, that may sound super spiritual, but it's a thing between you and God. You have to know where God is leading you into. And if you don't take the time to know where God is leading you, shame on you, shame on you, shame on me because we all need to know that for ourselves. We also need to know- But we need people in politics. We need the, Christians in politics. We need to be salt and light, right? Yes, we need to be salt those and light. two important, very yeah. important. We gotta be salt and light. And that means that God is calling some people to go into the state house, to go into the White House, to go into the uh, city, count, uh, city council chambers and the like. God is calling some people to do that. And he will give them the wisdom to know how to deal uh, with those politicians to do that. Coming up next. Either I'm, I'm trusting in my possessions, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm holding to what I have in my hand, or I'm, I'm relying upon the omnipotent, benevolent hand of God. That's coming up next on Viewpoint. If the love of money is the root of all evil, then why do we need to talk about it in church? Nathan Branham has a unique viewpoint, being part of an inner city missions at one time and now also a pastor. Welcome to the show, Nathan. Thanks, Bob. It's good to be with you. And we've all heard that before. I mean, some people quote it as money is the root of all evil. Sure. Some people quote it correctly, the love of money, the money controlling your life. But there's a, you, you see a lot of people in outside culture who will look at the church and say, all they do is ask for money. I don't know whether they're basing that on what they've seen on TV or they've really been to church and been through some times of fundraising or something. But why do you think that's, is it a, is it a good perspective if they're on the outside like that? Well, I think you always have to consider the source of criticism. Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus made it clear that you either serve God or money, right? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so you're either going to be uh, living for possessions and money, or you're going to look to give your money to God and the kingdom, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Is there a perspective shift that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm attending a church, it's like attending the Eagles Club or attending the Lions Club, and they've got my dues? Yes. Or is, it, is, is the perspective going to shift to where we are the body of Christ, and we've got a work to do, and it does take some money in this life that we're in, and therefore we're all in this together? Yeah, I, I think you hit on that. There has to be a perspective shift, and, and I think 
if we really believe what Jesus told mm -hmm. us about money. He, he told us not to, not to lay up treasures on the earth where it's going to rust and corrode, but to do that in heaven. And, and when I give to the church, if, if we could really believe this, that when I'm giving to the church, mm -hmm. I'm not just giving to this building, even though it's going yeah. to maintain the building. It's mm -hmm. going to keep water in the toilets, air, you know, and heat and things sure. like that. But I'm actually, I'm making de a deposit in heaven. Mm -hmm. If we would believe that, we would, we would be eager to give. Right. Because that's the truth. And, and we live in a society where money is, I mean, that's the medium of exchange. It is, is there pressure on you when you're, when you're, when you're preaching that, when you're, when, you're, when you're sharing that with your congregation that, Boy, they're going to think I'm talking about money too much. And what I'm talking about is our relationship with Christ. Yeah, that, that, it, the pressure is always on, especially when the savings in the bank is going down yeah. and your bills are piling up. You absolutely think about that. But here's where the faith comes in. You and I have to have our faith, not, not even in the, the, the congregation mm -hmm. that provides the finances, this is the time, and this is why Jesus made it so clear about money. Either I'm, I'm trusting in my possessions, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm holding to what I have in my hand, or I'm, I'm relying upon the omnipotent, benevolent hand of God. Now Christ asked for, a, you know, to, to go among the crowd and find something for these people to eat. He took an offering. In this case, it was loaves and fishes. That's right. And it, the, the, does the church have a responsibility to, to ask for the tithe? Absolutely. I think that, that the church needs to talk about giving. Jesus mm -hmm. said that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Um, the work that we do in the church is a work of faith that is dependent upon those that are, are the body of Christ. Can they ask too much? Absolutely. Yeah, they can definitely ask too much. Uh, and I'll just kind of tell them myself right now. Uh, we've just come through a time of, of doing B VBS and we were doing fundraisers. And I think they did like five or six fundraisers. And I said, uh, I said, boy, this is enough. We got to stop mm -hmm. asking people for money. And where was and the fundraisers were not specifically for the VBS though? No, they were. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, we had our budget for VBS, but mm -hmm. then some things exceeded. So we needed yeah. to raise funds. And I'm like, listen, you, you should only be doing <laughs> a couple of them. So, you know, it was a lot. I think you can. I've been to churches where they've done uh, more than one offering per service. And, you know, I think that gets a little wearing on mm -hmm. people when you're constantly going for their, their finances. But how about the pressure from the pastoral side? Yes. I mean, there's, there's pastors who come into a church and it seems like they're, matter of fact, there's majors now in, in church building. You can go yes. out and get your doctorate in church building. So a pastor comes into a church as a new pastor. Is there immediate pressure on him to do a brick and mortar project? to start building something, build the, the youth edition, build something in that church? I think there is. It, the culture that, especially in the American culture, where everything is bigger, better, mm -hmm. greater, uh, this really new phenomena of mega churches, yeah. you know, I think there's always that pressure to grow and to be big. And so, yeah, there's, there's a ton of pressure on pastors, what, new or old, yeah. to, to get kind of with the program and make things bigger and better. And so they have to become the pastor has to become a, a general contractor or, or an architect. He's, there's yeah. a lot of pressure on pastors from all, and, and people start looking at what the pastor makes. Yeah, you know, going back to something you said, a, a pastor's role is one of the most complex, I think, in, yeah. in the entire mm -hmm. uh, employment scheme. Uh, think about this, uh, a pastor's responsible for worship, for leadership, caregiving, teaching, finances, community life, management, communication, mm -hmm. self-development, all these things that he has to do. And he, he's on call typically 24-7. Yes. You know, so you're right. A, a pastor's role is, is diverse, complex, and it's involved. And I think a pastor is worthy of his hire. So it's not just an hour on Sunday morning or two hours of right. you two services. <laughs> That's right. So when you're, when you're talking to your congregation from the pulpit, mm -hmm. it's a Sunday morning and you're talking and, and the sermon may be on giving yes. or being generous or whatever that is. Do you lay out a formula for, for the congregation? I mean, should, should somebody walk out of church thinking, I got to reexamine my giving because I, I'm, I'm not to where I should be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think it, it is the responsibility of pastors to make the command and the reason for giving ultimately clear. We see in the Old Testament that giving was part of the religious life of Israel. So that's where we get this idea of the tithe or the tenth. Okay. They tithed off their livestock, they tithed off their crops. Everything that, they, that came in, they would give a tenth okay. of that, right? So now you come to the New Testament. And again, depending on who you ask, some mm -hmm. things that that is carried through. I'm not here to argue that today. I'm just saying, I think 
Ten, a tenth is the absolute baseline. It's at least a standard that we got it's from God. It's a standard, yeah. right. And you start there, and then some people want to ask about the gross or the net. I usually say it's the all of it. What do you want net. blessed? That's right. What <laughs> you, do you want, want your blessed? gross. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Somebody told me that one time. I said, is a tenth? Is it the gross or the net? Well, what do you want blessed? Your net or your gross? That's yeah. good. But over and above that, you've got the tithe, and then there's gifts, and yes. there's offerings, and, and the Lord talks about those as well. Yeah, I think that we should be giving a tenth, right? And then everything over and above that is considered an offering. So this might be uh, the place that we give to those parachurch uh, ministries, mm -hmm. to missions ministries. That's where that offering would go. As a final word, maybe for them and for, for pastors, when you're, when you're at that point where the bills are piling up mm -hmm. and the funds have gone down, are you trusting in that bread day by day? I mean, how do you... How do you get that to your congregation in, in your own spirit as well that I don't see it right now but the Lord said day by day I'm going to give you your daily bread. That's right. It, it's a daily walk of faith and it, w it, is, it is a blessing when you and I are stretched in our faith. It's Not hard to receive sometimes. It, oh it is. Yeah. Oh, oh no yeah. no. It, it's, yeah. I, would, I would even take it a step further Bob and say that it's, it's impossibility. If this thing were possible we wouldn't need the Lord. We wouldn't need the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't need one another. And, and I, I believe that, that God allows us to get in those tight spots sometimes so we can remember where our blessings come from.